We're here with Cass Fleischer to discuss her new book, Dead Woman Hollow, which was just released by SUNY Press. Um, can you say a few words about the ending of the book? I'm still a little bit puzzled by it. I can see there's some circularity between the first sentence of the book and the last, but I'm not quite sure what's going on at the end of the book. What part of the end of the book were you talking about? Uh, the end of the third part of the book, the last section of the book, the end of the book. You know, um, it's, it's it's a little bit, but the very end, at the very end, I'm not really clear on what happens. Is Georg going to kill the killer? Oh. Or, I'm not clear about the, the language you use there. Are you striving to be ambiguous? And if so, why? Well, who's in charge at the end of the book? Is it me or is it you? Well, you're the author, I mean, or the writer, or whatever you but want to call yourself. Yeah, but I mean, at the same time, I'm saying I already gave you an idea what I thought uh, the ending consisted of, and I don't really understand what what's going on. Uh, what do you mean you don't know? It's your responsibility to know. You're the author. You have at least to give us some... I don't even remember writing the book. Um, well, that's just great. I mean, how are we supposed to interview each other? How am I supposed to be interviewing you? Well, why don't you ask, tell you what, why don't you ask me what, what happens at the end of the book? I'll tell you what happens at the end of the book. Okay, yeah, let's work on this together because maybe, you know, the divide between reader and writer is, is, is not something that we want to we emphasize. Maybe it's something we want to collapse into some kind of collaboration. I mean, I think... Oh, come on. Uh, it's so goddamn old at this point. Who yeah, cares about that crap? I know. When I pick up a book, when I want to pick up a book, I want to be told a tale, and I want to have a, at least a sense that the author is in control of what he or she is doing. I'm not asking for closure. I'm just asking for a little guidance as to how I'm supposed to interpret. What are the, at least the possibilities? Um, I guess the possibilities would be uh, that Gayer is thinking, you know, he's going to have to just and tell me what you think. Oh, you see. Yeah, but see, this is what I'm saying. I'm interviewing you. you. Offered, you Look, I know. I could do that, but I could tell you what I think. I mean, I think he's conflicted. I th what are you doing? I'm getting water. Oh, you? and then right after the end, of course, comes this, you know, somewhat heavy-handed, you know, author's note about the place of history and uh, storytelling. I, I'm so not history is heavy-handed, is it? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, why don't you say a few words about that? What, what, what's, the, what's your rationale for writing something that's inspired by actual events, you know, like we haven't heard that before? When I first started down this path, I was thinking of the phrase historical novel, historical novel, something I thought I would never, ever, ever write, and I don't consider this to be a historical novel. All of it reflects the violence that I think comes out of this part of the world. Um, Just this part of the world or other parts well, of the world? It's a certain, I don't know, I have this bizarre thesis that rural poverty is um, different from urban poverty, and I'll spend the next 10 years trying to prove that to her. But, um, but what does that have to do with violence? I mean, you're suggesting that poor people are inherently violent? No, that there's a certain kind of violence that it has. Uh, you know, my first thought is to go back to Hank Williams Jr., a country boy can't survive. You know, you know, I've always had this self-mythology that a doomsday, you know, the best thing I could do is head for the hills because I know the hills. And I know you can do things like eat grass. And so you think that somehow correlates with violence? I, I think the isolation Everything begins here with geology, not history, geology. The history was determined by the geology, well, the impenetrableness yes. of the Appalachians, especially the northern Appalachians. Though there, is a, there are, of course, inroads being made by various cultures at that time, Native Americans. Yes. I mean, the Amish themselves are kind of... Right, but what better place to do it than a place where, you know, it's almost impossible to get a car up a mountain and down the other side. I mean, we have these things, in the Rocky Mountains they call them passes, in Pennsylvania we call them gaps. Shade gap, you know mm -hmm, what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's a it's a ridge like this. At some point, poop, poop, that's all you get. And I I just talked to bicyclists who've done that crazy thing where you bicycle across the United States, and they're always so nervous about the Rockies. And they get through the Rockies fine. They get to the Appalachians, and it becomes very difficult. And I'm trying to say that the geology is so isolating. At least I feel vibes from my family as I grew up with these people, that it was hard to get out and it was hard to get in, Okay. You know? okay. and once trapped there, I think it's particularly tough on women. Um, well, what do you want your readers? Let, okay. well, let me just ask, what is it 
primarily that you that you want your your readers to take away from this book? That I love these people, and these killers. Yeah. That's an interview with Cass Fleischer regarding a new book just out on SUNY Press, Dead Woman Hollow.